This tutorial is sponsored by the 3D Coloring Book, a project specifically designed to help empower artists who are struggling with texturing in Substance Painter and to help show you that anyone can create beautiful pieces of art with just a little bit of practice and guidance. To instantly gain access to hundreds of pre-made professional level models and hours of high quality tutorials, click the link in the description and begin your journey today. Hello guys, it's Andre Legion. In this video I'm gonna show you the process breakdown how I've designed, modeled and textured this stylized Overwatch handwatch. This is my own design, so we will talk about this a bit, then I will tell you about blender steps such as modeling, creating low poly model, UV unwrapping and also how I've created ID map, and then we'll go to Substance Painter and we'll talk about texturing. First of all I did some research. I had the idea of stylized sci-fi prop, and I thought why it cannot be accessory like handwatch that could belong to Overwatch universe. I looked at every kind of stylized stuff like vehicles, weapons, armor and structures, and I tried to figure out what details usually used in this style. I had some image in my head like this watch should be quite massive and made from metal, not just luxury fine or cheap and plastic. It should be device that Overwatch soldiers could use. I started with basic shape like two cylinders for watch and bracelet, and then added more details like links and brackets step by step. I should decide how these parts will be linked, and it could be like magnetic field or something like that. I didn't want to add some balls to connect them, just to keep stylized and more sci-fi look. I also decided to stretch out the main watch part. Then I extruded faces from link to be closely to that. As a result they started to look more uneven and interesting. I used boolean operations here and here. At the bottom we have details that will be baked. I subdivided model a couple of times to be sure the surface and bevels are smooth enough. With low poly I removed all edges and faces that don't affect any part of silhouette, but I kept the bevels. I created seams in parts that should be sharp or less visible parts. To have right shading we might to use auto smooth or we can use edge split modifier. I marked sharp edges for this. My UV is not optimized enough. It has too much free space. These parts definitely might be better. You can see the stretching you have by pressing N, View, and Stretching. Pure blue color means there is no stretching. We have a little stretching in greenish parts, but it's acceptable. Then I needed to create ID map for texturing. For doing this I used vertex paint method. We can also use different materials way, but this will create many texture sets in Substance Painter. We don't need this. To paint our mesh we should go to vertex paint mode and choose random color and Press Shift and K. To make visible what parts are already colored in object mode, we can go to Viewport Shading, Color and Vertex. Be sure you have colors different enough to easily recognize it afterward. Now before export we want to be sure we have right names to high poly and low poly meshes. Same name should be for both plus suffix high and low. And now we select an all low poly collection and export it to FBX. Export FBX, click mesh, selected object and export FBX. The same for high poly collection. In Substance Painter when we are creating our project we need to choose our low poly mesh and after that when we created project we need to bake our maps. First of all we need normal map, for this we need uh, our high poly mesh and now we press bake. 
After that, we break in rest of the maps except ID map and thickness. We don't need last one because we don't have any skin or something like that. And press break. After that, we uh, break in ID map separately. We need to clear this list and change color source from material color to vertex color and press break again. For better realize how to texture the stylist prop, I looked to original Overwatch style. I collected screenshots of weapons, armor and props in game and even from other games and I've analyzed their materials. And they all has either common features and differences as well, so you can grab what you want to reproduce and you have to experiment of course. For blue color I used base color first. As you can see it applies only for specific parts it because we using color selection on ID map here. Color variation with some granges. We don't need super detailed granges because we need stylized look. Grange map 4, one of my favorite here. I also added roughness variation to make more interesting look. Edges are just use curvature generator and warp filter. It also enhances stylized look. I used anchor point here for metal edges that use same generator but with some additions. We will look at this a bit later. Also I've added another darker part color variation on inner part of bracelet to reproduce some scarf by wearing watch on hand. And then I added ambient occlusion to create more depth. Here I used some light gradients to enhance stylized look. And then I realized that these links are became too bright. I decided to make it a little bit darker. And then even more darker. If you notice this color now is slightly different. I decided to might be interesting variation like they was made from another material or have little different paint. In addition this resolves uh, issue, this color variation slightly split the main watch part from bracelet. White is quite similar. We also have mask with color selection, base layer, color variation and roughness variation with black and white spots, feather stylized, fill layer, sharpen filter and some hand paint. Also we have some slight gradient that doing bottom slightly darker. And also you can see some decals, but we will talk about this a bit later. Here we can see a little tricky solution. First I had one mask in one material and then I wanted to combine this with another mask in different material. We cannot just combine two masks with all inside of them. In this case anchor point can help. I just linked one mask with another mask by anchor point. That means this mask is looking to all stack beneath that mask in this fill layer. Here we can see the reference. And then it adding their own layers to that stack. I hope it's clear enough and you get the point. Orange is quite similar and even easier. Just base color, color and roughness variation. I also added gradient filter to make one more color to grunge. Light blue is quite similar and have some color variations and this part was hand painted. For black part I've added hexagonal grid. This is super common pattern in Overwatch. So why we shouldn't use it here, right? I used anchor point to reference base color and then I did it slightly darker with HSL perspective filter. 
Another new thing here is some warm gradient to make more interesting and not so flat look. Now we need some extra detail like where. What you see now might be quite confusing. That's because I had the different approach at start, which consisted in having their damage for every single material. But then I've decided it should be the only one metal beneath all the painted parts. I needed to combine all masks and have only one layer as material. But I faced a problem with masks union again. And again I used anchor points to solve it. Every layer have anchor. And in main mask we have layers are referenced for them. Like this. And we don't need any basic layer visible, except for base layer, with material of course. At base layer we have color, roughness and metalness and also height a little bit lower. For glowing material I've added emissive channel and created new layer with only emissive channel. Then I used color selection and as you can see we have very rough edges, not the best way in this case. So I've painted it over with this circle alpha. You can change different parameters in your specific case. To avoid these artifacts make sure you change the alignment to UV. Now about decals. Make sure your UV is ok and mesh is finished before adding some hand touch. Because you cannot do big changes in the future without risk to break something. That was what I missed. So I painted these decals using hard surface normal maps. You can use 2D view for it or 3D orthographic view, it works as well. You can change it here. After the cows was added, we need to bake the maps again to have curvature and AO generators working on the cows as well. First we need to export normal map. File, export textures. Here we need only normal map and export. Then we add a normal map to each slot. And as we can see, all the cows are baked. After that, we need to bake rest of maps again and we will have nice and smooth curvature and AO maps. Now let's see how I made this lighting display. To model it I just created cylinder and plane. The plane we just leave as is, but for cylinder we have to delete top and bottom and then match it to lighting circle on watch. Now we need to create mask in Photoshop. I just created some geometry using boolean operations to create circles and segments. You can create one shape, then create another shape, select both layers, go to layer, combine shapes and subtract. To create circle, make sure you click first, then press shift. If you press shift then click, you can create both circles at one layer. We don't need this. So click shift and release, click shift and release. And we have two separate layers. This is another project with display, because as you can see, I couldn't bake proper AO map at this one. If you know how to ignore another texture sets when baking, please let me know in the comments. So for this texture set, I've added another two channels, opacity and emissive. Here we need the alpha texture we created. To create numbers, I used one of these fonts. For light, I used 3D distance generators to create fading effect. We need some play with position. 
just change the opacity to make better lighting effect. And now we have to export our textures to Marmoset Toolbag, add some light and render final result. I really hope this video was useful. Thank you for watching, bye.